Saturday morning, November 14th, as dawn approached, Caltrans engineers checked and double-checked the 600 explosive charges planted in Pier E3, the largest pier foundation for the old, now gone, cantilever section of the dismantled original bridge. With federal and state environmental approvals, the bubble curtain that was designed to absorb 80% of the underwater shock wave was activated. Dozens of biological experts monitor the blast zone, ready to call off the implosion of the five-story underwater structure if birds or large animals were in the zone. State officials had planned to halt traffic on the Bay Bridge 15 minutes before the implosion so drivers wouldn't be startled by the noise. BART trains would also be halted as a precaution. At 7 a.m., traffic on the bridge was halted. BART came to a standstill. The blast happened exactly as Caltrans had promised, 15 minutes after traffic had been stopped. Detonation at 7.15 a.m. We were very pleased to have met our window of opportunity. We were looking at 6.45 to 7.30, and uh, as far as we're concerned with regard to the timing, it was a success. From the shore, the blast was visible but almost anticlimactic. Spectators near me experienced an optical illusion. They saw the explosion, but afterwards the two barges were still present. Their perspective didn't reveal the pier had sunk beneath the waves. Right. Um, I, I think that people weren't quite sure what was going on. We did everything to explain that, you know, the barges held the compressors that were facilitating the uh, bubble curtain. The pier cap was there, and then there was like a fountain of water, and then it was gone. When the water came back down, there was no pier cap. It was anticlimactic for some people, but we tried to explain that there wouldn't be much to see above water. The best vantage point was broadcast live over the Internet from this camera. The implosion, not impressive from shore, shook the Old Bay Bridge. The only thing visible from above were the timbers which had covered the pier cap. In the coming weeks, sonar will determine the effectiveness of the implosion and whether any debris needs to be picked up and placed inside the underwater hollow structure. Experts will determine the effect of the implosion on fish and wildlife and whether, after federal, state, and local officials examine the evidence, implosions will be used potentially on remaining piers. On the Old Bay Bridge, Mark Jones reporting.